Prediction is very difficult, especially about the future Yogi Berra once said. And yet people try and try again. And nowhere this is more evident as in predicting the future equity earnings. In this video, let's take a look at why relying on equity analyst forecast is worse than flipping a coin. And guys, stick to the end of the video. I will mention one resource that personally helped me to further my knowledge of investing. But first, let's dive into data on analyst forecast. So far, equity analysts have had a terrible track record. The CXO advisory group analyzed individual stock forecast data from 2005 to 2012. They looked at roughly 6,600 forecasts. What they found was eye-popping. An average analyst was only 47% right in their earnings predictions. Jim Cramer, the Mad Money host, for instance, has had a success rate of less than 47%. The distribution of forecast accuracy looked like a bell curve. The best analyst had a 67% success rate, while the worst one had a 22% success rate. Here's another study by McKinsey and Company from 2010. They looked at annual earnings predictions for the S&P 500 companies from 1985 to 2010. McKinsey found that analysts have been consistently too optimistic. Analyst growth estimates range from 10% to 12% a year compared to actual earnings growth of 6%. The conclusion was that on average, analyst forecasts have been roughly 100% wrong and too high. McKinsey also points out that analysts were slow to change their forecasts in light of changing economic conditions. The typical forecast would start high at the beginning of a year. Later, it would drift downward as the year went by. By December 31st, it would converge, if at all, towards the actual number. The only exception to analysts being wrong were the years of strong economic growth. For instance, take the years from 2003 to 2006, which saw economic growth and higher earnings for the S&P 500 companies. In those years, the actual earnings matched or surpassed the analyst forecast. And conversely, the analyst forecasts were hopelessly wrong when the economic growth slowed down or declined. If I wanted, I can almost for sure set up my own earnings forecast shop. All I need to do is to buy analyst consensus reports, take numbers from there, divide them by two and voila! I may even have better earnings forecasts than most analysts have. Also, there were earlier studies by O'Brien. They showed that naive model predictions did worse than analyst forecast up to one year. But beyond one year, the simple time series models outperformed analyst forecast. In other words, the analyst forecast beyond one year were a total garbage. And more recent studies such as that by Bradshaw kind of confirm this conclusion. So the next time I see these long-term projections for earnings on Yahoo Finance, I can safely ignore them. What's more, nowhere else this upward bias is evident as with cyclical companies. By cyclical, I mean energy, commodity, or some industrial companies. According to McKinsey Research, the analysts ignored altogether this cyclicality in their reports. They only showed upward positive trend in their earnings. And this was regardless whether the company was at its peak or trough of the cycle. How can this be? Are analysts that unsophisticated? Or maybe there is some other justification for this? The financial literature offers several explanations. First, analysts working at investment banks or brokerages have misaligned incentives. If a sell-side analyst issues a negative report in the stock, it can damage his employer's relations with a company. Many investment banks often underwrite securities for which they issue recommendations. I cannot think of a more perverse incentive than this. I mean, as an investment bank, I earn fees of the IPO. Why would I issue a negative report even in light of bad news? My client will turn back on me and take his business elsewhere. Also, there was some interesting research by David Hirschfleifer. His focus was on the so-called analyst decision fatigue. He found that analysts often cover many stocks and need to revise their forecast often. As the number of forecasts increases, decision fatigue sets in and the accuracy goes down. 
Hirschleifer makes another interesting point. If an analyst experiences fatigue, he's likely to take a shortcut in his estimates. He can reissue his previous prediction or agree with a consensus. This is a classic herding or self-herding behavioral pattern. Of course, there could be other explanations for inaccurate forecasts. Among them are recency and first impression bias. For instance, if I heard something today about a stock, it will more likely to influence my view about it. This is a recency bias. And conversely, if I informed my initial view about a stock, I am more likely to stick to it despite the developments to the contrary, and that's a first impression bias. Finally, analysts are humans and they can miss something important, especially if they are working under pressure, which can also lead to incorrect predictions. So if I am into stock research, what should I do then? Should I rely on consensus estimates or should I ignore them completely? In my opinion, consensus estimates are a good starting point. It always pays to read someone's alternative views on a stock if I can get hold of research notes. Also, there are some sell-side analysts with a deep knowledge of industries and companies. But it's not easy to filter them out, though. But if I can, they can give me insights into companies' risks, strategies, and opportunities. I won't rely per se on their earnings forecast. Instead, I would try to pick up their brain. Learning from others helps me personally to improve my own intrinsic valuations. But in conclusion, the next time I hear someone opining on company's earnings, I would ask myself a question. Is this person a Cassandra and can see future? And, and then I would safely ignore him and make my own conclusions. And guys, as promised, here's my helpful resource for today. It's an online repository of investment lessons, data and valuation spreadsheets by Aswath Damodaran. Professor Damodaran teaches valuation classes at New York University. He has many free online classes that help me improve my valuation skills. He also wrote an excellent book on investment valuation. I linked all resources in the description. That is it for this video, guys. If you learned something new today, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content on investing. Thank you for watching.